Hello, Professor Meyer. What a pleasure it is to have you with us today. We are so excited for the opportunity to talk to you and learn more about the science of longevity and aging. Thank you for having me. Now, before we get into this exciting topic, I would like to tell our viewers of your background. You are currently a professor at the Center for Healthy Longevity in the School of Medicine at the National University of Singapore. And you received your MD in 2003 from the University of Lübeck in Germany, where you were also a resident at the Institute of Immunology. And later you became a full professor of gerontology at Fried University in Amsterdam and are the founding president of the Healthy Longevity Medicine Society. And your research focuses on unraveling the mechanisms of aging and age-related diseases, and you've published more than 350 peer-reviewed articles. What, what an impressive list of accomplishments, and it sounds like you were the right person to speak to about longevity and aging. So let's get to a few questions. The research on aging has really exploded in the last few years, with many of the cellular mechanisms focusing on immunology. So tell us how our immune system can impact longevity and how it can impact aging. Yeah, the immune system is a wonderful organ. So we have so many cells in, for example, our blood, but also in our tissue. And if we are thinking about the immune system, we often think about fighting bacteria and viruses. And that's, of course, a very important role of the immune system. But very often we forget that we also need the immune system for repair of our tissues. So during the aging process, we are constantly renewing our body. And the immune system has a very, very crucial role in, in that. So it's absolutely crucial to keep the immune function up to date. Now, there, there's another area of research that really seems to become hot recently, and that is cellular senescence, which, of course, we often think of that as these zombie cells, these cells that are half living and half dead. So can you describe how cellular senescence affects the aging process? Sure. Um, so every cell we have in our body, most of them are dividing and dividing and dividing. And while they are dividing, they can reach into a stage which is called senescence. So the zombie cells. And we call it a senescent cell. That cell is not able to divide anymore, but is still in our body and very likely negatively influencing other tissues, other cells in the surrounding. Um, we think that senescence is attributed to something not good and bad because it's old, but it might also have a positive function. So we already know that senescent cells accumulate within our body and all different tissues we have and all organ systems. And um, very interesting, because that's the reason why the zombie cells are such a hot topic, is that if we remove senescent cells, for example, in animals, these animals will become younger again. And that's the reason why we as researchers really focusing on senescent cells at the moment to remove them out of human bodies, out of, out of animals, to see if we therewith can make somebody younger. Wow, that's really interesting. And of course, particular interest to us for life is that much of that longevity and aging research has involved studying natural products. In fact, you hosted a conference called Unlock Healthy Longevity Supplements at the National University of Singapore earlier this year, and quite a bit of that discussion centered around this enzyme, this cellular enzyme called NAD. So tell us a little bit more about NAD and, and what happens to these NAD levels as we get older. Yeah, natural products can be very potentially beneficial for uh, for humans and there was maybe even antagonizing the aging process. That's the reason why my group at the National University of Singapore is heavily investing in that, that topic because these are small molecules which might uh, influence the aging trajectory quite uh, potentially beneficial. So um, we know that NED is lower at higher age. So what is it? In our cells, we need energy. We have mitochondria, which make the energy. But we need lots of uh, substances, lots of enzymes that our our cells are running smoothly. So in one uh, particular uh, substance we need is NED, and that's being found to be lower in older individuals. 
Um, luckily, uh, NED can be boosted, can be increased by certain substances like nicotinamide mononucleotide or, or other substances to really showcase uh, while giving it that we can increase the NED level. So the entire idea is also, okay, if something is low, can we subsidize it with something else? Can we give it to an individual? And there was restore the aging process. And that's actually what we, what we did. So NED is quite crucial uh, in the aging process. Um, we do not understand in full detail how it works and how much NED we, we need, but we know, yes, it's absolutely crucial. Okay, and, and you've actually published a couple of research articles on the clinical benefits of NMN and how it's able to increase NAD levels as well as physical performance. And in fact, it was that research that really influenced us to include it in our product. So thank you for those studies. Now, last question. There is an ongoing discussion of genetics versus lifestyle and what impacts are aging the most and Depending on the research, I've seen that anywhere from being a lot of an impact or not much of an impact by lifestyle. So in your opinion, as far as lifestyle choices and, of course, supplementation, what can consumers do to navigate this complex aging process? So first of all, do not rely totally on your parents, uh, which means on the genes you have been given from your, your parents. Um, the contribution of uh, genes are roughly... 20-25% uh, with regards to the lifespan and the health span. So how long you're going to be living and um, how 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 healthy somebody is. So it's roughly 20-25%. What the rest is, uh, we think this is what you do with your genes. So what kind of pages of the very nice book, your genes, you are reading and um, how you behave, actually. So lifestyle has an important uh, factor. Very importantly is, yes, to move and to eat less very often, less, eat healthier. Um, but what we now discovered is that lifestyle is important, but personalizing uh, the lifestyle choices is of most important. So we have our genome, we have our microbiome, which are the bacteria in our gut, for example. Uh, we know how, how our body is functioning uh, during the lifetime. And if we then adapt the lifestyle towards what we, we, we got via the genome, I think that that's most important. So if I summarize it, it is, yes, um, having a, a healthy weight, which means not being overweight and not being obese. That's very important. But also nurturing uh, with food, uh, for example, the gut microbiota. Uh, in in a most efficient uh, way. If we are talking about physical activity, it's not only to to move uh, every day and have the 10,000 steps, but it's very important also to improve the balance and to train the balance and to do resistance exercise training next to endurance training. And that in a very good balance, what the, what the body needs. Um, sleep hygiene is, is of utmost importance. And um, stress hygiene is also very important. So while taking the lifestyle factors together, sometimes there is um, uh, advice to also use uh, supplements, uh, which can then nurture further the body. But that is really individualized based on, on many factors, how the diet is and what the physical activity is. And of course, also what that individual would like to improve and what is needed to improve and at what stage of life somebody is. Thank you, Professor Meyer, for your insights in longevity and aging research. There's clearly so much work being done in natural products that will ultimately help the end user be able to better navigate that process. And so on behalf of 4Life and all of our affiliates and customers from around the world, including in Singapore, thank you for your time and thank you for your insights. Thank you for having me.